So I'm going to be making a half nut for this Atlas 618 lathe. It was sold as a mica undercut version <clears throat> and never had a half nut installed. This lead screw has never been used, even though it's been installed for 40 years or whatever. I'll show you a picture of a half nut on the screen now. What I'm going to be working on is the round ring part that actually screws in to right here. This is a cutoff from an electric door lock. This is the magnetic strike plate that the magnet clings to. When I first carried it home out of the dumpster, I thought it was stainless steel. But working with it later, I just I realized it's just a very clean cast iron. And because the piece needs to have the half nut sliding inside of it, I think cast iron is a good choice. So the first thing is to bring this down to thickness. The piece that I'm making needs to be 300 thick, 300 thousandths exactly. And this piece is currently 457. So I've got it mounted up in the mill. I've got my homemade face mill in here and we're going to mill off 157 thousandths. Step one will be to touch off the surface and then set our Z, our Z axis DRO to zero. Now the next thing, if you look at the drawing here, it should have a channel in it that's 175 deep. So now I'll set up with a different end mill and we will create a channel that's 175 deep across what will be the center. All right, <clears throat> so I can't create the channel front to back because I'll hit the vice jaws. So I'm gonna have to create the channel side to side. The first thing is to establish where is the center of the 1.75 inch circle that we're going to be cutting out of here with a hole saw. So half of 1.75 is 83.75. If I move this thing 83.75 across the y-axis, uh, I'm looking at the DRO up here, I don't know if you can see, there you go. So I'm looking at the DRO, 83.75. So now I'm going to zero set. That just became the center of the part that I'm working on. So to create a channel that's one inch wide, it's, this, is, this cuts out 394. So you simply subtract the 394, your tool width. So your total side to side movement is going to be 606. Side to side from center is going to be 303. I will start the machine up, make a plunge cut as I'm moving to the side. I made two passes that way, totally offsetting the tool bit by a total of 303. And I've now made two passes this way, and I've offset the tool bit by 290. So what I want to know at this point is, how wide is my channel? This will be my finished pass. And I should, in a perfect world, need to take off 10 or 11 thousandths. Alright, so 991. So we're gonna move at nine thousandths. Where should 
now have a, a one inch wide channel. There it is, one zero zero. If I look at the, use the DRO to return it back to our zero set. Drill chuck. just realized that I really ought to drill and tap the holes before I cut the rest of this out. I mean it's fixtured up, why not take advantage of that? These holes are offset, they're 1.360 total, so they're offset 0.680 from the center. So I have tap drill for quarter 20 drill, and I've offset it by 680 from the center. <laughs> All right, so the phone battery died. Here's what you missed. Last you saw, this piece was still right here. So I finished drilling and tapping these two holes. Then I sat up, set up and ran a two inch hole saw down through the center, which effectively cut this disc out of this. This now goes in the garbage. Then I took this piece, flipped it upside down because the vise jaw can grip right here and that will make this slot perpendicular to the vise jaws. So grip this in the vise jaw like so and then using the 3 8 inch carbide end mill milled out this slot to the specifications on the drawing. 1.249 long 7 eighths of an inch wide. And having done that and given it a bit of a deburr, the bracket is complete. All we need now is a half nut to go in it. <laughs> 